Hey everybody, there's alien spaceships, non-human intelligence, floating above Earth in geostationary orbit in 1952. This is what the internet and YouTube and some channels are claiming that the wonderful Beatrice Villaroel has found in her Mount Palomar transient survey. It would be very interesting if that was the case, and it would be fascinating. But I don't think Beatrice is saying that, and I think there might be other possibilities, <laughs> putting it mildly. So I'm waking up this morning and looking at YouTube, as we do, and there's this, um, what's his name, John Michael Goodyear's channel, talking about Beatrice, and the report was reasonably good, but he went out of his way to rubbish something that I'd said about the possibility that they might not be geostationary, non-human intelligence, alien spaceships floating above the Earth. And that was that they might be high-altitude man-made projects. But he gets it wrong. It would be amazing if they were alien spaceships. But I don't think you understand basic photography <laughs> So let's go over some basic science and some basic photography to try and understand a bit of what other possibilities there are out there. So these were long exposures uh, taken by the Mount Palomar Wonderful Telescope for a survey. And um, the exposures were maybe a few minutes long. The Mount Palomar Telescope um, tracks the Earth's rotation in the opposite way. So if it didn't, over five minutes, single point sources stars would be a streak but they're not they're nicely tracked as as single point sources uh, but the exposure time was a few minutes to get all those photons from deep space onto the film because they're very weak objects and it takes a long exposure to actually get a nice picture of stars uh, but on the plates are these weird um, other flashes these other light sources which appear on some plates and uh, don't appear on others. Mount Palomar took a number of photographs of the same bit of the night sky and what Beatrice has wonderfully found is that there are transients meaning there's some plates with extra uh, bits of light on them like extra stars and originally she called these vanishing stars in her Vasco project but she's now um, thinking that these um, are very short duration um, uh, events and a lot of them have turned up in this 1952 which we initially assume is before anything was in space, survey done by Mount Palomar. So it opens up to internet speculation that these flashes might be coming from um, something non-human above the Earth. Uh, but then it all begins to break down. And I, th the basic science and photography of um, knowledge of people like uh, Ross Coulthard kind of goes out the window and John Michael Goodyear. I, d I don't understand what planet they're on, really. So a long exposure of a distant star takes a few minutes, but any photographer would know that you can also illuminate a nighttime shot with a flash gun. Push! And put the same amount of energy uh, that you would get from a long exposure, a bulb exposure to expose your garden at night. You can also um, take a very short exposure if you put enough energy to illuminate the garden. That's a possibility that nobody's really talking about. But the question I asked when I heard Ross Coulthard interviewing Beatrice, and he was going, um, these must be geostationary. Um, and that would mean they were before Sputnik, so they're alien spaceships. Well, hang on, uh, yeah, 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 hang on just one goddamn moment here, Ross. So what you're saying is that there is an alien spaceship, here's my model of one, in geostationary orbit, which is about 40,000 plus miles from Earth, and it's not moving because it's 
in lockstep with the stars in the background and it's continually reflecting light or producing photons which appear on the plate. Uh, I assume you're thinking it's reflecting the sunlight and it's stationary because it's stationary with the other stars. So you're assuming it's in geostation. Look, all this is beginning to look really flaky because in the second photograph, it's gone. So <laughs> uh, did it fly away? Did it stop reflecting the light? I don't understand because there's a much easier explanation for these transients. And that is, there's a long exposure. Mount Palomar is moving, tracking against the rotation of the Earth. Small amount of photons are coming in uh, from deep space and exposing the stars, which you see in the photographs. And then, for a very brief moment, something lower down reflects the sun, flash, and reflects it into the photograph. So you've got lots of photons going into the photograph from something that a very transitory flash of something that went glint in during the exposure. Now, um, it doesn't have to be in geostationary orbit. In fact, it doesn't need to be in orbit at all. It could be something in our atmosphere. So. I asked the good basic question, was there anything in our upper atmosphere in 1952 that could reflect sunlight? And the answer is not balloons. No, as John says, because balloons actually don't reflect. The balloons of 1952 were made by General Mills and they were transparent polycarbonate. And um, Hank, Hang on just another second. What is a balloon? Well, it's not just something that you let go in a party. The idea of a uh, balloon is it's a uh, buoyant craft to do something. And obviously under a balloon, my hand's the balloon, underneath the balloon is a payload. That's why they had the balloon to lift up something. And it's quite possible that these payloads, which do exist, they were spy balloons or scientific instruments in 1952, were metal. And although the balloon was tracking slowly in the wind above Mount Palomar, maybe, they were so high up, 100,000 feet possibly, that means that they're 73 minutes still in the sun after it's gone dark on Earth. So for 73 minutes, 100,000 feet, it's possible for this thing under the balloon, not the balloon, but the thing under the balloon, to be rotating and glint a flash of energy into the Mount Palomar survey. Now, that's just the way my warped brain is thinking. So John and everybody, it's not a balloon. The balloon was carrying something. So were there balloons at high altitude in 1952? Oh, yeah, there were. Prior to Sputnik, Sputnik was not the birth of the space race. Sputnik was probably also Sputnik. They call it Sputnik 1. It probably wasn't Sputnik 1. It was probably Sputnik 15, but you don't hear about the other 14. It was Sputnik 1, the first one that worked. But prior to Sputnik 1 in 1957, the whole of the world was trying to launch things into space and doing high altitude surveys. And the best way to get to very, very high altitude, especially uh, to have survey devices, ELINT and CIA spying devices, was hanging under the balloon. The balloon is irrelevant. The balloon is just a platform to get it up there. And it's the thing that's underneath the balloon that could possibly be rotating and glinting. And all it would take during the long exposure from Mount Palomar is the thing under the balloon to go glint and then fly away to put a flashy, a blobby, a transient on one of the survey pictures. And of course, the next picture it took, there was no object 
hanging underneath the balloon because the balloon's over there now. And um, there were an awful lot of balloons. There was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of scientific and military and spy balloons in the sky in 1952. It was the big boom year for balloons. So it's not balloons. It's the thing underneath that might have gone past the survey telescope high up, gone glint once, and then buggered off. That's what I'm saying. So please, 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 John and others, don't say I'm saying it's balloons. Um, I'm saying it's what the balloon was carrying. And undoubtedly, if you look at your country's history, there was an enormous buoyant craft high altitude program going on from the end of World War II up until uh, the Americas successfully uh, made rockets. And there was lots of things in space. Here's a piece of footage shot in the United States long before Sputnik of something going up into space. And in fact, it's a camera on board a um, a captured V2 rocket that was taken back to um, the United States. So there was obviously a precursor to the space program. But let me just go over this again. So a glint from high energy something catching the sun, flashing in the sunlight, high up above the Earth, which is still in sunlight after you've had sunset at Mount Palomar, could put enough energy onto a plate to cause a flash, um, which would ex fully expose a transitory blobby, a circle of light onto the plate, while the long exposure of the deep space objects was still going on. That is just as much of a reasonable explanation if not a bit better, in my opinion, than it was an alien spacecraft in geostationary orbit that was shining a light down the Mount Palomar telescope as it tracked it, and then in the second picture it had gone. Um, that raises a whole bunch of very interesting, I like the idea, uh, concepts, but how logical really is that when you could just have a flash that causes a transitory exposure onto the survey pictures. Uh, that's what I'm trying to say. And if you just don't like me and if you just want to rubbish me, uh, that's fine. But if you actually want to do um, science, if you want to talk about possibilities, if you want to be open-minded, then you should look at all possibilities. But I'm going to end this by telling you why, in fact, I'm probably completely wrong. And this is very interesting. So 100,000 feet is where these payloads were being flown around under a balloon, right? And um, they only managed to capture the sun for about an hour and an hour and a quarter after it's already gone dark in California in the Mount Palomar. So it's a possibility. But this is why I'm probably wrong about it. And that is... Do we know what time the actual survey pictures were taken? Is there a timestamp or a record in a logbook of what time the exposures were actually taken? Um, speaking to a, a astronomer, he says that most astronomy actually takes place Oh, you know, a few hours after sunset, because after sunset, there's still this area of twilight where the higher atmosphere uh, refracts and reflects light energy down into the bit that's gone beyond the sunset, and it's still kind of semi-dark. So observatories tend to wait till it gets really dark, caused by the rotation of the Earth and the sun going around the other side. So you're in a shadow. And so if these photographs, these transitory images were taken at three o'clock in the morning, there's no way that something hanging underneath a balloon, a, a payload that is twinkling and catching the sunlight, would actually capture any sunlight. They would be in total darkness. So if we know the time of the photographs, if they were taken just a couple of hours 
um, after sunset, it's possible that it was a glint of something still catching sunlight in high um, Earth um, um, atmosphere. But if these Mount Palomar survey photographs were taken at three o'clock in the morning, there's no way that it could be a glint of something in our atmosphere because they would be in total darkness. It's all about asking this question. Is the truth out there?